So, hi. I will do my own introduction, but thank you, Sam. <laughs> um, so, hi. It's awesome being here. I love those OWASP events. Uh, it's nice to see some folks from the community, some friends, and for the new folks, welcome. It's the best community you can join. Uh, thank you for having me. Thank you, Sam. I hope you're enjoying this great event, talks, the pizzas are great, and also you have some cookies with the JIT logo on, so it's cool. Um, I know it's a bit of a tough hour, it's late in the evening, but I will try to wake you up and hopefully I'll succeed, tell me at the end, okay? So, let's get started, and today we'll talk about the five open source security tools that all developers should know about. Now, as promised, before we dive in, I'll do my own quick introduction. So I'm Waz Bobsten, I'm a solution engineer at JIT. I've actually been a full stack engineer for many years and I joined JIT a little over a year ago as a full stack engineer. And after about eight months at this position, I've decided that I want to mix things up a bit and I became a solution engineer. I'm also studying for my bachelor's degree in biotechnology I'm a big foodie and I love to travel, so it's great we're in London. Um, that's about me. I wanna tell you a bit about JIT as well. So JIT is an open DevSecOps orchestration platform. We're helping modern dev organization own their application security without hurting the dev velocity. We're automating the best of breed open source security tools. We love the open source community. And we're integrating security to your entire life cycle. So the code, the infrastructure, the CI CD pipeline, and runtime. And everything, of course, is done with little to no effort. So that was the introduction. And now we can really, really get started. And we'll start by taking a look at this example project. Now, just by looking at it, we see a usage in Python, in Terraform, we see Docker files. We see multiple DB queries, we see multiple API endpoints. Now, those are all extending our potential attack surfaces. And this basically means that the developers must take responsibility for the code they're writing. Just like, you know, no developer would deploy an untested code to production, you know, with fear of breaking bugs. You can only hope they're doing it. Um, developers need to make sure that the code is secured before they're deploying it as well. You know, security should be a concern to developers because they're the first line of defense when it comes to our systems. So for this talk today, we're going to cover the five categories of tools that we need to consider. We're going to talk about how we actually evaluate an open source security tool. And after we set the baseline, we'll dive into each and every one of those categories and we'll analyze the relevant tools. And of course, I'll share our recommendation based on our experience at JIT because we have evaluated, tested, and benchmarked so many open source tools. And I'm excited to share with you guys today the results. Then we'll get into how to leverage those tools. We'll talk a bit about the challenges as well, some cool matrix. And for the grand finale, we'll talk about how to take it to the next level. So starting with our first topic, we have five categories of tools we need to consider. Basically, when we're thinking about developers-related security, this is what needs to come to mind. So code scanners, in order to protect our code and data, such as you know, SAST and secret detection, we need to have dependency checkers as well to cover our libraries, and we need to have infrastructure as code scanners to protect and, and validate our uh, infrastructure configuration. We also need to have some container scanning to protect our packaging. And finally, we need to have runtime scanning, basically to ensure that we're you know, covered and safe in runtime as well. So how do we evaluate an open source tool? We need to have one set of, of key matrix to measure by. So no matter the tool, no matter the category, this is what we need to do. So we thought those are the great and, and most important factors to go. Um, you know, results quality. Results quality for developers, this reigns supreme. It's gotta be good, first and foremost. You should potentially accept this over everything else that you do. Dev experience needs to be huge speed, ergonomics, integrated into CI, customizability. I think tools needs to be customizable in order to produce truly meaningful results. And not so many tools allow you to change them, so this is something to notice. 
maturity. Don't pass over the good and young stuff. They could be better than the old supported stuff. Now, let's dive into each and every one of those factors. We'll start with the results quality. And results quality is related to false positive, false negatives. And for this one, I want to share a story that I've heard from a friend of us that is related to exactly this kind of a false positive and negative. His security team felt like the tools that they've been using missed some secrets. But those secrets were actually an example placeholders. Now, in the developer's view, those aren't actual secrets, right? But technically, it was hard-coded credential. So this is exactly what we need to think about. We need to play off of those two perspectives. What is true positive? Was it true negative for both the security team and the developers? You need to validate the tools by running on your code. And you're probably asking why? Because all of us vendors, we adapt the rules and the performance to sample project. Now, this is artificial. So you need to run multiple tools and you need to run it on your code, compare the results in order to truly understand the different things that they can catch. Of course, when you are using your real code, please do that on the same version, the same branch, to have an actual process that is properly uh, running. Let's do screens here so it takes time. <laughs> um, developer experience perspective, you need to run everywhere that the developer work. So the terminal, the IDE, in the CI, this is what we need to think about. The tool must be fast. And, and I'm talking, you know, quicker than testing the CI, few seconds locally, because we never want to hurt the dev velocity. If we'll hurt the dev velocity, we won't have any adoption. So it's just a waste of process. The results need to be human readable or machine consumable, because developers don't want to work hard to understand what we want from them. I know I've been a developer myself, so think about this as well. You need to be able to run the tool by yourself because we need to make sure that we're allowing the developers to do that alone. They don't need to be dependent, not on the security team and not on anyone else for that matter. No, maturity. And again, here we're not talking about who is the vendor of the tool because a big name does not necessarily mean more mature or more accurate. We need to look at the popularity of the tool, the active con contribution and involvement around this tool. And customizability. I'm a big fan of, of providing flexibility because people have specific needs. And, and being able to tailor security into your unique need, into your unique needs, this is extremely important. That's why at JIT, we're providing a generic yet opinionated framework to orchestrate the various tools, but we're still allowing the developers and the, the users to configure it to their specific needs. All right, a quick check-in. How are we all doing? I hope I uh, woke you up a bit. Because we talked about the categories, we talked about the factors, we have the foundations and the basics, and I hope this is making more sense now in terms of the different aspects, the areas, the tools we need to cover, and you have a better understanding on how to, to do each of those uh, evaluation and why are they important. Um, and I know and I hope that you know right now how to actually do the evaluation, not just why. All right, so we've covered the basics. Let's start by analyzing the tools from each and every one of those categories. We'll start with the first one, which is code scanners. Now, the mission in, when we're using code scanners is to identify vulnerabilities and security defects in the code when we're writing the code. Today, we're gonna host some matches, some combat and battles. So for this one, those are the competitors for the best code scanner. And our recommendation is open source SEMGREP. Now, let's evaluate it together. In terms of results quality, it has over 2,000 rules that include other tools to extend the coverage. So like Git leaks and GoSack, it has support for over 30 languages. This basically means that it enhances the efficacy of the tool. Now, this is an example of uh, secret scanning using open source SEMGREP. 
with GitLix rule set. This is the prompt to trigger the scan, and this is how the results look like. From a DevX perspective, you can run SEMgroup open source everywhere in the CLI as part of your CI CD, in a Docker container, and in the ID as well. It's very fast, so no compilation needed here. And in terms of customizability, it's very extensible. It has many output formats, and it's super easy to write rules to, so you don't need a PhD to do that. Finally, um, maturity-wise, right, just making sure it's synced. <laughs> Um, SEMGRIP open source has a large community of active contributors. It has many years of development around it, so it's good. This is what we like. Let's move on to the next battle of the day, which is dependency checkers. Now, the mission here is to detect publicly disclosed vulnerabilities in the various components that we're using. Those are the competitors of this match. And our recommendation is OSV Scanner. Now, this is a recent tool that is maintained by Google and is supporting most of the package managers. Now, let's evaluate it together. In terms of results quality, it leverages the OSV DB. It has support for over 13 languages, so it's good. We like it. From a DevX perspective, it uses the OSV schema. And here as well, the developer can run it everywhere. And we've mentioned before, this is what we want. Now, when it comes to customizability, we can specify the scan to specific SBOM and log files, which is good. And we have multiple scanning options, like recursive scan. And we also have the ability to ignore, which is great for developers. Maturity-wise, it's definitely a growing community, and there is a rise in popularity. Now, let's take a look at an example of a recursive scan using the OSV scanner. This is the prompt to trigger the scan. And this is the results of it. I just wanted to share it with you so you know what to expect, so you know how it looks and feels, so you won't be surprised. Great. So the next battle is infrastructure as code scanners. So the mission here is to detect security misconfiguration in our infrastructure as code and prevent it from reaching our cloud. So it's shifting left, catching the vulnerability as soon as possible. And a quick view of the competitors for this match. I'm going to let you take a picture. I saw some of you wanted. <laughs> Great. And we chose Kix. So again, let's evaluate Kix together. Results, results quality-wise, it has over 2,000 queries with support of 18 frameworks, which is insane. And the rules come with unit tests. This basically means that it improves the trust that we have in this detection. Now, from a DevX perspective, it provides over 200 remediation recipes. Now, this is a huge bonus when it comes to developers, because we all know that developers don't want to handle security, and they must do that in the shift left era that we're in right now. So providing them with a fix goes a long way with developers. And again, you can run it everywhere. In terms of customizability, the queries are written in OPA OPA, um, and it has the ability to support new frameworks, so it's agile, and we like it. This is what we want. Maturity-wise, growing popularity and a growing community of contributors, us included. Now, let's say I want to build an EBS volume in a Terraform, for example, okay? Now, we can see here that the, that the encryption uh, configuration is commented out. As you can see here, it's circled out. Now, if I'm scanning this code using Kix, I get this result that the volume encryption is disabled, and I can see exactly where it is, okay? Where the exact line where, that is causing this error. All right, another quick check-in. How are we all doing? Are we up? Awesome, do like this, so I know you're up. <laughs> So we covered three of the five categories. We hosted three matches, and we have a few more to go. So I hope you're awake and you're ready for the next one, which is container scanning. Now, the mission for this one is to detect both the vulnerabilities 
and misconfiguration in the container images. The competitors for this category, those three. And our winner is Trivi. Um, here are the results of our evaluation. Let's go over it together. In terms of results quality, it supports container scanning, file system, Git repositories, virtual machines, secrets, and infrastructure as code. And it can generate an SBOM, which we like. DevX perspective, it's fast. You don't need any additional setup. You don't need any additional libraries, and we like it. And of course, you can run it everywhere. Customizability-wise, you can write and run your own detection logic, and you can use plugins to extend the CLI. Lastly, maturity. It's very popular, and it has a large contributors community. Now, here is an example of an output of a Docker image scanning using Trivi. This is the prompt you can use to trigger the scan. And again, a quick view of how the results look like so you know what to expect. Right, moving on to our final category of the day, runtime scanning. The mission in runtime scanning is to detect the vulnerabilities in our web application and our APIs while they're running. Now, those are the contestants for the final match. And we chose Zap. So Zap is one of the most powerful open source uh, pen testing tool out there right now. Used to be an OS project, sadly moved to the Linux Foundation, but we'll always love it. Um, so we evaluated Zap, and those are the results. Results quality-wise. Zap has a lot of features, and it detects the OS top 10 risk, which we also like, because we like OS. And it has over 250 rules. From a DevX perspective, you can run it everywhere, including a desktop app, which is very unique for an open source security tool. And you have a headless mode to integrate it into the CI CD so you can run Zap as part of your deployment. Customizability, it has over 100 extensions that are available today in the marketplace. And you have plugins to extend the CLI for Zap. Maturity wise, it's part of GitHub 1000 projects and it has a huge community and a high popularity. Our community is part of it as well. Now, here is a quick example of the result of runtime scanning using Zap. This is the prompt that we use. This is what to expect, as we've mentioned. Now, you can see here that Zap also provides some solution guidelines, and we talked about it. We like it. The developers like it as well. Great. So, just to sum up what we've done so far, those are our recommendations. For code scanners, open source SAMGRAP is our, is our choice. For dependency checkers, OSV scanner, infrastructure as code scanner, Kix is our way. For container, sca container scanning, Trivi is our winner. And finally, for runtime misconfiguration scanning, Zap. I'll let you a second to take a picture. Okay, awesome. <laughs> so, this was a lot. <laughs> um, so, a quick check in again. How are we all doing? Right, so just to kind of go through what we've covered so far. So we talked, about the, we talked about the five categories of tools we need to consider. We explained why and how to evaluate those tools. And we talked about each and every one of those categories and we analyzed our recommendations. Now, let's talk a bit about how you can leverage those tools. So I recommend you involve your development team from day one. But do this in baby steps, start in a small scope and progress from there. Don't start strong. So make sure you're not blocking and interfering the development lifecycle at first. You know, start by making it optional. So for example, don't integrate it into the CI and then make it a required check right away. Integrate it, but don't block the PRs at first. Get constant feedback from your developers, tune the tools, adjust the settings, and then expand the rollout. Also make sure you have KPIs for your tool testing efforts and keep track of them. This will help you make a decision from a clean and objective place. Now, as we said, we need to keep tracks of the KPIs to ensure proper decision making. Um, here are some crucial matrix that I recommend you take under consideration. 
So the security detection rate, the mean time to resolve, and the exposure windows, all are great ma matrix and super important. Um, the screenshots that you see here are from our platform because we used it to kind of measure and keep track of those crucial matrix. And now let's talk a bit about the challenges because we need to talk about them and not just the benefit. So some of the challenges you may face, you know, scaling the rollout of a tool. If you have over three projects, things might get a bit tricky here. Um, you may have a hard time get consistent behavior from all the tools across your entire system. Also maintaining all of the tools, keeping them up to date with all the versions and the uh, updates. This might be a pain point. There is also a big challenge in handling the existing code vulnerabilities, what we like to call a backlog, versus preventing the new vulnerabilities to be deployed to production. And the remediations that are provided by the tools might be a hit or a miss, so it's something to pay attention to. Now, as promised, let's talk about taking it to the next level a bit. I think we can all agree that there is a heavy lifting that needs to be done, right, in order to actually evaluate and integrate the security tools to the, to the development lifecycle. This means we have to automate. If this process won't be automated, it's not going to last. It's just a waste of time and money for us. So this is my shameless plug. Um, I just wanted to share us as an example because we automated and integrated over 20 different security tools into our development organization. Um, I also wanted to share us just because to tell you how we handle those challenges. Um, so basically we codified security plans and we automate them, such as the OWASP SVS and the AWS FTR, for example. And our engine orchestrates the prepackaged, open source, commercial, and cloud native tools across the entire environment. So we basically provided ourselves uh, and, our and our users a one-stop shop for the entire product security at the tip of our fingers. And JIT is also automating the evaluation process for you. So this, take is, this step is taken out of your plate as well. And our mission, the jewel in the crown for us, is making the developers the first line of defense without the actual need for them to be security experts because no one has the time and money to send them to learn how to do security. And most importantly, we're never hurting the dev velocity. Now, if this is interesting to you, you want to know more, you want our help doing all this process, which could be difficult, please check out our website or reach out to us, um, jit.io. You can visit us there. Um, I really appreciated the opportunity to talk with you guys today.